Well, good morning, visual artist Charles Wolf here, and today I'm bringing you another one of my painting videos. This video was requested by a good friend of mine, Dave Usher. He's a fellow artist who does lots of really great painting videos here on YouTube, and you can look for him, Dave Usher, and find him there. Um, but he saw this painting and was inspired by it, and when I put up a video earlier this week, I think it was uh, a hyper time-lapse painting video and you can watch the entire painting from start to finish in only six minutes it's very very fast with music so if you don't want to watch this whole 30 minute video I get that that's cool the hyper video the hyper time lapse video is there for you but those of you who would like to see the whole thing want to watch it in real time as you're seeing here um, this is the video for you and I'll be doing a little bit of commentary as we go along now I'm not going to tell you every color as I go through this partially because there is so much blending happening on the canvas that I'm going to lose track of what colors I was using even as I was doing it. Um, I mix a lot of colors on my palette and so then I'm using secondary colors that I've created to mix with other secondary colors. So you know it gets like third colors forming and it's kind of a mess. So I will do my best um, and instead of commentating I, well, I'm using blue here or I'm using black here which is what I am doing I'm going to simply flash the colors up at this point, I'm sure I'm already doing that. When I go back and re-edit this commentary, I'll put in the text overlay of all the colors that I can remember. A few times I may not. And I'm not going to commentate this whole thing. A few spots will just be just the painting going on. Um, I'm not sure how much I feel like talking today. So we'll see as we go along what I end up actually commentating. Because I don't know. I don't plan these out too much in advance. I just roll with it. And that's just how I am. I started this composition with the idea of doing an abstract, and so that was my purpose, was just to do a free, non-objective painting, and just kind of see where the colors took me, and, and my basic idea was to sort of have this subtle fading from a really deep cool of that black, sort of into a lizard crimson mid-level of coolness, getting gradually hotter until it was really popping towards the left hand side. But my original idea was just to sort of have a fading of really warm on one side becoming cool as you go across from left to right to the other. And that was my idea. I'm using a couple of different brushes here. I'm using a half inch brush a one inch brush, a two inch brush, and yes I even break out the old three inch brush for this painting. I was very excited. I actually bought one the other day. A fairly cheap brush. It was a, just a you know um, synthetic uh, brush. It was just for the workhorse brush to slap in some paint really quickly. I'm using acrylics by the way in case I didn't mention that. And let me go over really quickly what my color palette is before we get going too long into this painting video. Today I'm going to be using a set of, I think it's like seven or eight colors, so let me go through them and figure it out here. I'm using Mars Black, Cobalt Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Yellow Ochre, Titanium White, Cadmium Yellow, and Burnt Umber. So those seven colors are my color palette. Um, I love doing abstract paintings. I enjoy the freedom that they give. I can sort of paint with whatever colors I feel like at the time, whatever my emotional state is, I can reflect that in the canvas, and I can really invest my personality and who I am as a person into my paintings, or at least I try to. There's a lot of different approaches and, and methods and techniques, and um, of course I'm always learning by watching other YouTubers and their painting videos, going to galleries and looking at more art. So the best way I find as an artist to get better at being an artist is to just immerse myself more and more in art. If you want to learn how to paint yourself and you want to become a better artist, if you already are an artist, watch other people paint. And the more you can do that, the more I find that I learn from people who are much more experienced than even me. I'm at the beginning of my career in painting, where some people are much more progressed and maybe 40 years into it. They know what they're doing and how the paint's going to react after 40 years. So I like to look at their 
and see what they're doing and try to mimic that as much as possible. With my own style, my own way of looking at things, but to sort of take in a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's a very postmodernist way of looking at art. I'm going to be sometimes doing landscapes. The next day I'll do an abstract. Maybe I'll do a cityscape. I'm not locked into any particular style, but I can take the best from both of these worlds and combine them in my own way. I probably mostly do abstracted landscapes, some more realistic landscapes. I'm sort of either an impressionist I'm an abstract artist, so I'm kind of in between those two. But that's okay. That's where I'm at right now. I don't know where I'll be in 20 years. Will I be doing the same kind of art? Maybe, maybe not. And that's okay. The freedom of that is what I really, really love. I've started to fill in the entire canvas here. Again, this is the full-length version of this painting video. So we have ways to go. We're only six minutes in, and this is a 27-minute video, I think it'll be. So uh, there's that large three-inch brush. Whew, so much fun to use that, that big bad boy there. So awesome. The uh, Just to take it right into that black and then the blue and just... Rah! and just throw it onto the canvas. It was so awesome. Um, just a fun experience this for me as an artist. Something I hadn't done before using such a large brush. So it was a cool, cool little experience to use that big three inch flat brush there. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. I'm definitely going to use that thing more. As I said, I wanted to quickly kind of fill this canvas up and then kind of step back and look at it. I knew that this painting was going to be similar to clouds. So I'm thinking about clouds when I'm doing it, but I'm not limiting myself to have to paint just clouds. It can be really anything. Again, it was starting as an abstract. As I go further along, I don't know if you can already tell, it slowly morphed on me into becoming an uh, abstracted landscape because of the inclusion of a little lake that I put in at the bottom and some impressions, very dark, sort of very loose and vague impression of trees. And so when I was working on this, I kind of hit on the idea, oh, this could be a cloud here and this can be moving up here. Maybe it's a galaxy, maybe it's stars, maybe, I don't know what it is. But the idea just made sense to, oh, I'll put a little tree line in down here and kind of leave this huge upper portion, I think it's the top, a little over two-thirds of the canvas becomes this ginormous, moving, interesting skyline, um, or abstract painting even. And then underneath that you have what kind of gives you a certain structure to it, which is this very loose, very interpretive uh, landscape. I work, I would say, not the fastest, but not the slowest either. I just will, a lot of times will be, especially if I'm doing something like this, I'm putting them in a lot of colors as sort of an underpainting, okay, and sort of figuring out where do I want to have my lights and where do I want to have my darks, and then just adjusting things. I knew I wanted to have a larger alizarin crimson pinkish red area in the center, and so I knew, knowing that, I just kind of blocked that in as a preliminary step. I'm going to have to go back over, of course, once this first layer of acrylic starts to dry, and it dries fairly quickly. I don't help it along by using any tools like a hair dryer or anything like that. I want it to be still wet enough that it will blend a little bit. But um, I'll just take a brush, kind of fill it up, really grind it out so I have a good, even coating, fairly thin layer. So the first layer, not too much paint, mostly putting it on the canvas and then moving it around. And then the next layer, I'm going to then be a little bit more liberal with the amounts of paint that I'm using. Notice that I'm varying the way I'm holding my brush and moving my brush around a little bit. I don't have any particular way I like to hold the brush or not hold the brush. Uh, sometimes I'll hold it like that 
where I'm sort of pointing with it. The other times I'll grab it more like a paintbrush, um, excuse me, not paintbrush, as like a pencil. And that works pretty well for me. The biggest thing is that I keep it moving and I'll do like this left to right motion if I want a fairly even blend. Sometimes I will have it do lots of up and, ups and downs, uh, diagonals. I just try to keep changing my direction of the bristles and let it work and play and dance along. I really like it the way it looks. This is just a personal preference of a lighter color dancing on top of a darker color. That might be from my oil painting background, but I just love the way it looks. Even though I'm using acrylics, I'm thinking of it in a very oil paintery sort of way, if that makes sense. Um, my approach is always usually put my darks down first, sort of block in what I'm doing, and then as I progress, start layering layers on top of it, uh, as I mentioned. Formally, I did study art in college. I didn't get a degree in art. I actually got a degree in music. I am actually a pianist by trade, and I'm a piano teacher uh, during the week, and I enjoy teaching students of all ages and teaching them the art of piano performance. And I have even worked as a professional piano player uh, before as part of the way I survived while I was in college. And I really enjoy that and love music uh, almost as much or maybe as much as painting, but they're both a creative outlet for me, and so that's why I like to do them. But painting is a hobby turning into a career for me, and the more I paint, the more I fall in love with the idea and the act of painting. It's just something that really brings my life a lot of joy, and I hope that with these videos, as I've said in other videos, that my work will bring joy to other people. That's really my desire when I'm painting. If I can make someone else's day a little bit better with what I'm doing and if people enjoy watching these videos, then I feel like I'm doing a good thing and that makes that's the best feeling in the world for me. Uh, but uh, here I'm bringing in some of the lighter colors and I'll be honest, at this point in the painting I think the original idea sort of got away from me and you can kind of see that. I have kind of colors everywhere. I, I sort of lost that original idea of cool on one side, kind of merging over right to left. And I think about halfway through this, um, we're nearly halfway, the three, two or three minutes will be about halfway through this painting video. And um, I think that I kind of looked at it and went, oh, my goodness, look at that. I'm not quite reading the way I want. It's a little bit of a mess. I need to organize this a little bit. And so uh, one thing I noticed was there wasn't enough contrast. I need more darks for the lights to sort of pop all those warm colors to really be rich. You gotta have the interplay of the dark. So I went back in after I added all this red. I don't know why it was so heavy on the red. I just was like, ah, freaking out a little bit at this point, trying to get something to happen. And it did, it worked. I got this red going and once I saw the red, then I thought, okay, I'll put a little more of the blue on the right side and then I think start building from there. It's not a big deal because at the midpoint of a painting you do want a lot of color on the canvas or I like a lot of color on the canvas so that when I go over with other colors I'm getting a variation and an interplay and a change within my layers of colors. If it was a very static white I wouldn't get as much interest and this painting is very vivid and you look at it, look at it very closely there's a lot of movement happening between the colors and there's change and texture and hue and, and that's just from having so many layers. One thing that I should point out, um, and this is how I was taught, one thing that I should point out, and this is how I was taught, was to always start with the background of a painting, sort of the upper portion of a painting typically, if I should, especially if I'm doing a landscape, um, or even doing a um, objective painting where I have a vase or something in front of me. Um, and I remember from my classes in college that, um, yeah, we'd have all kinds of knickknacks and junk on a table and we had to paint the table. and all the knickknacks and stuff, and um, it was okay. I mean, that's not my cup of tea, 
um, doing still lifes like that. That's not really what I like painting. But uh, it was very good because it made me think about perspective and uh, lights and darks. And After that, I've sort of become more and more impressionistic and more and more abstracted. And that, to me, is just more fun without having too many uh, guidelines. Just paint on the canvas. Let's go. And so that is really... Um, really just a way I like to do things. But let me go back to what I was trying to say. I typically start with the upper portion, or what we'll call the sky. In this painting, it turns into a sky, but it really wasn't a sky when I started. Like I said, it was an abstract. Um, but as I was painting, um, I'll start with that. And then if I move forward into the foreground, I'll start layering from there. And that, to me, works a lot better than jumping around top, bottom, middle, left, right. Unless I'm doing an abstract. In which case, I want to fill in the whole canvas for so I have an underpainting, and then go back over top to bottom, and that's sort of my process. Ah, yes, I'm so excited as I'm looking here at the video. Yes, that blue is coming in, the dark is there, and wow, look at that. Look, the cloud, or that shape I have, is starting to become more rounded, and I wanted that depth to happen, and I think that the change from the hot to the slowly becoming more cool as you round the corner on the right-hand side there into the lizard and crimson. Ah, it's starting to look great. Okay, here I am starting to add in those trees I told you about earlier, or sort of impression of trees, sort of a tree line, sort of, over top of the mishmash of colors. And I think that this really was the turning point for the painting. As soon as it got that right-hand side in, everything after this point was very focused and very conscious. All my decisions were very clear. I was sort of floundering, I think, at the 13, 12-minute mark. I wasn't quite sure what I was doing, where I was going next. But as soon as I latched onto the idea and returned to my original idea of cools on the right, mid-tones, to hots that it brought the whole painting to life and brought everything just perfectly together so I'm really excited about that that it worked out so well and uh, this is a, one of my favorite paintings I've done so far I have to say it's gotten a lot of great feedback people seem to really enjoy it and I really do appreciate everyone who likes subscribes and shares my channel if you have time please check out my blog at impulsive artistry dot blogspot dot com again that's impulsive artistry dot blogspot dot com you also can follow me on facebook and on twitter you just have to look for the word and the keyword is impulsive artistry although on twitter i didn't that handle was taken so i think i went with art impulsive that's the one change for twitter but facebook it is impulsive artistry and so is my blog and of course my youtube channel is also called um, impulsive artistry My blog is the center of everything that I'm doing. So when I create videos for my YouTube channel here, I then will turn around and take those, embed them into my blog articles where I'm talking about painting, about living a creative lifestyle, enjoying art, the, some of the trips that I take to galleries, things like that. So if you ever want to read more about myself and my artwork, about my particular painting pieces that I do, I actually have more information in my blog articles about them. So be sure to head over to impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com to check that out. should also mention that I have this wonderful thing where I have these guest artist features as part of my blog where I invite guest artists from around the world to come and participate, write little articles for me, and feature their work. One of the things that I like to make sure I have is a variety of people from different arts. So not just visual art. I have musicians. I have musical composers. I have figure makers. I'm going soon having a quilter on. So all kinds of textile and visual and musical arts all is featured on my blog. So if you ever want to see more 
up and coming great new artists like that you want to see who who is doing stuff maybe that's not in the mainstream but on the fringes of, of what we're doing and meet new up and coming artists you can head over to my blog and meet great wonderful new people that I've met over the time via online or in person and they're going to showcase what they're doing what they're putting out to the world and to society and how they're making a difference in their communities. All right, this painting is starting to really come together and I'm very excited at this point. Um, I don't know if you can tell, my pace has quickened and my idea is coming together. I know exactly what I am doing, where I am going at this point, and the piece is just, mm, it's just coming together. It's so exciting. I love this part of a painting when it just turns the corner you know and it just starts clicking everything sort of focalizes and it just makes sense Ugh, so much fun so great that water down there is just just reading perfectly I love that yellow and it's just shimmering just gorgeous mm. ah, I'm so excited <laughs> I love painting it's just so much fun I really really do it's so great Heading into the home stretch here. Bringing up that red a little bit more on the left hand side. Again, I'll be flashing up the colors that I'm using, as much as I can remember them um, as I go along here. Um, and yeah, so if you miss a color here and there, I do apologize. Um, I'm just the ones I can remember. Again, I do this in one setting and I don't stop and I'm just painting. Uh, so then a couple days later I'll come back and I'll record the audio for these videos and I don't always remember ever, quite everything that I did beyond what I can figure out from watching. Uh, again, I'm very in the moment, I'm very concentrated on what I'm doing. Um, that's why I actually don't do the videos and do the commentary at the same time. It's just not my style. Sometimes you just gotta find what works for you and this is what works for me. Pop of color, there's that warmth, bringing in the light of that, that beautiful candium yellow with a bit of yellow ochre. Mm. Awesome. I have to say this was a fun, fun painting to do, and um, it just turned out, just, I think, fairly well. And I was just so excited the way it, it worked out. Yeah, you know, when you're painting, you never quite know what's going to happen, or if, is it going to work out or not. You just have to try things and, and keep experimenting. If you if you're a newer painter and you are watching this video, keep at it. It's okay. I've done lots of paintings where I've done the painting. I'll be at the moment I'll be like okay this is not bad next day I'll come back this is horrible <laughs> and that's the, that's the truth um, it there are days where you just really knock it out of the park and there are days when you're painting and you know you're just not feeling it or um, it just doesn't work out quite the way you were expecting or hoping and and that's okay the biggest thing you can do is to dust yourself off pick up your brush the next day and try again Maybe go with the same idea again and just try it a slightly different way. Maybe it'll work that time. Or um, if that doesn't work for you, then go back and try something new. Um, it's okay. It, one of the nicest things about painting is it's so forgiving. If you make a mistake in some area, it's very easy to grab some more paint, kind of go over it, to scrape it off with a palette knife and try again. Um, let it dry and then paint right over. If you really, really hate the whole painting, and I've done this before, where it just wasn't going anywhere, it wasn't working at all, and I was kind of stuck. Just didn't like what I had. Start again. Take some gesso, cross the whole thing, or some other sort of medium, and 
paint a new painting. Uh, or don't even, just leave the paint as it is and it'll be a nice underpainting for whatever new painting that you do. So always, always know that you can start over. That's okay. It really, really is. But keep at it. You never know what you can create until you try. Well, a little pop of some orange up there. Oh yeah, so nice. few last minute brush strokes. I'm sort of just turning my brush left to right and letting it sort of dance and play along the top. I'm not really trying to control the strokes really at all in this painting. I wanted, to, wanted it to be very active and very free. Uh, I did not want to have any of it look too straight. All the dancing wispies and lines going everywhere. That is really what I was after and going for. And so when I was painting this I made sure that I didn't control my brush too too much but let it dance and play. Notice that on the bottom part of the painting, much as you can see it there, the bottom got a little bit cut off of the bottom left hand corner but I am sort of reflecting the colors. It's dark blue on the right hand side and it's reflected below. A little bit of the lizard and crimson there into that brighter yellow portion of the actual water and then reverse order lizard and crimson, a little bit of that gold color from the yellow ochre mixture, a little bit of white in that, and then a little bit of blue on the far left, and that's it. And that's the composition. Okay, there is the completed painting. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe to this channel, and share it with your friends on social media. I'll be back. Thanks.